Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys stabilization inside of DaVinci Resolve and the three modes that are available for you. So stabilization is really powerful here because it's basically one click and the computer, whichever computer you're on, is going to analyze your clip inside of DaVinci Resolve and it's automatically going to help make adjustments inside of your video clip in order to make the video footage a little bit more stable or in other words it's going to shake all over the place a lot less now obviously if you can help it when you're recording your footage it's best to make it as stable as possible before you actually put it into a video editor but if you need to these tools are available for you Okay, so let's go ahead and start by showing the clip without any stabilization whatsoever. And what you're going to see is there's a lot of jankiness. It's tilting to the left, the right. It's kind of all over the place here. And then the clip ends. Okay, so the idea behind these three different modes of stabilizer, perspective, similarity, and translation, is that you go from the top down. Uh, the top one is going to include the most attributes where it's going to try to stabilize and in theory would be able to get you the best results if everything works properly. But on perspective mode, you may run into a little bit of issues like a sudden jump uh, it, from one frame to the next. And if you get results like that, you can bump down to similarity and in similarity, if you also run into problems, you can go down to translation. Uh, you can see this in the official documentation here. Basically, perspective is the same as similarity, where it has pan, tilt, zoom, and rotation, but it also includes perspective, hence the name. And then if you drop down to translation, you lose the rotation. And it says here, for instances where only X and Y stabilization gives you acceptable results. So basically, you start with perspective. If you have issues, you bump down to similarity. And if you still have issues, you bump down to translation. And if after that, it still doesn't work at all, uh, then I don't know, maybe you have to retake the shot or something. So anyway, let's show this clip off uh, once again with the base footage, so no stabilization. And you can see the jankiness, and then it should go into perspective, which is the starting place where you should theoretically get the best results. So there's perspective mode, but you can kind of see there's a little bit of instantaneous jumping, so maybe you switch to similarity here. And this is the clip with similarity looks a little better so maybe you'd stop there and then finally here's it with just translation and so that shows you the three modes of stabilization here so in order to stabilize any clip you literally just have to select the clip choose your mode down here and usually you would just default to perspective and then you go ahead hit stabilize it'll take a minute depending on how long the clip is and the speed of your computer but when you come back, you should see the lines on this graph change over time, indicating differences in the tilt, the rotation, and the perspective, all those other attributes, which when manipulated by the computer can actually help to stabilize your clip. Uh, now, one more thing I will point out here, uh, DaVinci Resolve 14 does have this newer version of the stabilizer, but there might be people who are used to the classic stabilizer. I'm not one of them, but if you have, want to access that, uh, you can click on these three dots here and go to classic stabilizer here so that you can get the old mode of doing things. So there are two settings relevant to your stabilization you can manipulate down here at the bottom, cropping ratio and smoothness. So the cropping ratio is basically how hard you want uh, DaVinci Resolve to work to try to stabilize your clip. If you set it to one, then that's gonna mean no stabilization. And if you set it to zero or close to zero, it's going to mean it's gonna try very hard to stabilize your clip, even if it makes uh, the footage actually look quite a bit different than it did originally. And then the second option, smoothness, is going to be the amount of jitter you want to try to remove at the clip, obviously at the expense of how much it looks like the original. So if you have a lot of jankiness in your clip, you might want to bump smoothness up. The more smoothness, um, the less jitter you should get in the final clip, though that might make the movements actually look a little bit more unnatural in the final edited shot. So it's gonna kind of be up to you how you wanna manipulate these. Do you want to shift it more towards having the most stable clip ever? Or do you wanna keep some of the original look of the footage and not make it look so much like it was just edited together, but more like real unmanipulated video clips? So less cropping ratio and more smoothness is gonna make it look more natural, but it will smooth out the shot so it's less janky. 
And then the less stabilization you have, the closer it's going to look to the original clip is generally the idea there. So pretty simple. Uh, just note that if you do change the cropping ratio or the smoothness, or you do change the mode from, say, perspective to similarity, you do have to re-hit the stabilize button so it can recalculate everything one more time, which is going to require your computer to figure out that clip and do all the calculations. But aside from that, that's pretty much how stabilization works in DaVinci Resolve. So it's super powerful. Definitely one of the cooler features I found inside of the program. So that's just in the color tab, if that wasn't obvious. And uh, I've been Chris, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.